Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Could the Lord ever leave you? Could the Lord forget his love? Though a mother forsake her child, he will not abandon you. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Should you turn and forsake him, he will gently call your name. Should you wander away from him, he will always take you back. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, we gather today on this Friday, on the feast day of St. Thomas Aquinas, a priest and a doctor of the church. As we gather here today, we rejoice in a blessing of a new day, the blessing of life, the gift of Jesus, the opportunity of conversion, of walking in his footsteps. And as we gather here today, let us ask the Lord to forgive us, for we have sinned. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who made St. Thomas Aquinas outstanding in his zeal for holiness and his sacred study of sacred doctrine, grant us, we pray, that we may understand what he taught and imitate what he accomplished. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives, who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. As the turn of the year when kings go out on campaign, David sent out Joab along with his officers and the army of Israel. And they ravaged the Amorites and besieged Rabbah. David, however, remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David rose from his siesta and strolled about the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing who was very beautiful. David had inquiries made about the woman, and he was told she is Bathsheba, daughter of Elam, the wife of Joab's armor bearer, Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers and took her. When she came to him, he had relations with her. She then returned to her house. But the woman had conceived and sent the information to David, I am with child. David therefore sent a message to Joab, send me Uriah the Hittite. So Joab sent Uriah to David. When he came, David questioned him about Joab, the soldiers, and how the war was going. And Uriah answered that all was well. David then said to Uriah, Go down to your house and bathe your feet. Uriah left that palace, and a portion was sent out after him from the king's table. But Uriah slept at the entrance of the royal palace with the other officers of the Lord and did not go down to his own home. David was told that Uriah had not gone home. On the following day, David summoned him and ate and drank with David, whom made him drunk. 
But in the evening Uriah, Uriah went out to sleep on his bed among the Lord's servants and did not go down to his home. The next morning David wrote a letter to Joab, which he said by, sent by Uriah. In it he directed, place Uriah up front when the fighting is fierce. Then pull back and leave him to be struck down dead. So while Joab was besieging the city, he assigned Uriah to a place where he knew the defenders were strong. When the men of the city make a sortie against Joab, some officers of David's army fell, and among them Uriah the Hittite died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Truly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you alone have I sinned. What is evil in your sight, I have done. Be merciful, O Lord, for I have sinned. I have done such evil in your sight that you are just in your sentence, blameless when you condemn. Truly I was born guilty, a sinner, even as my mother conceived me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Let us hear the sounds of joy and gladness. The bones you have crushed shall rejoice. Turn away your face from my sins and blot out all my guilt. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, you have revealed to the little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land, and would sleep and rise night and day, the seed would sprout and grow, he knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he yields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that is sown in the ground. It is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth, but once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it, Without parables he did not speak to them, but his own disciples he explained everything in private. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There is so much that I could talk about today from the scriptures and, of course, from this great feast of St. Thomas Aquinas, who was really one of the premier theologians of the church, a Dominican, and for many, many, many centuries, the teachings and the writings of St. Thomas Aquinas are used in the seminaries to help us understand faith, because Aquinas seemed to say it best. He seemed to know the most, because he was of such great intellect. But while I can speak on St. Thomas Aquinas, I really prefer today to speak to you about our first reading. Once again, it comes to us from the second book of Samuel. 
And once again, it speaks to us about King David. And remember, throughout the scriptures, we keep hearing about King David. First, this youth. Then he was anointed to become king. And then he becomes this great king chosen by God. And God promises that his line and his kingdom will never end. Even today, we call Jesus the son of David because he is of that royal line. But look at what sin has done to David. Sin entered into David and Bathsheba. But what happens is, is that sin is just not this personal thing between myself, usually. It usually has a social effect, that it touches more people than just one. Sin is not private. Sin is communal. And that's why many times we often don't realize the ramifications of our sinfulness. But look what happened here. David had relations with Bathsheba, who was married to Uriah. They both committed adultery. And so in the midst of that, a child was conceived. Now, of course, David has this great idea well, you know, he'll call for Bathsheba's husband and he would bring him to the palace and then he would send him home to have relations with her. And then this way, no one would know who the father of the child was. But there was something that David didn't count on, that Uriah was a faithful soldier. And because the men were in battle, he didn't go home to have relations with his wife. Instead, he stood at the palace. He stood with the other servants. And so now David wonders, how is he going to cover up the sin? How is he going to cover this up so he doesn't ruin his reputation? So he sends him into battle. And he sends him into the battle and his commander is told how to have him killed. And so now Uriah is killed because of the sin of David and his need to cover that up. And I think we can almost think of almost any other sin. And we can see how it not only affects us, but it will affect others. The ripple effect. Which is why there is this communal dimension to our sinful. And that we not only harm ourselves, but we harm others and perhaps even the world. That's how sin corrupts. That's how sin warps. It not only warps our relationship with God, but with one another. And perhaps the relationship of another with God. What are we called to do? Fridays are typical days when we seek God's mercy. That's what we need to do. We have to ask for the forgiveness of our sins. Let's not be like those people who say, well, I didn't kill anyone. That's one of sins. There are many other sins. There's the damaging of another person through gossip. To damage another person's reputation. And you know, that spreads like wildfire within the community. And now, of course, we have the internet and we have social media. And gossip spreads. It not only spreads, it sells. Look at the tabloids and other news media. We have to be careful. We have to avoid temptation and avoid sin. That's what the act of contrition tells us. And I think that that is a prayer we each, all of us, should pray every night before we close our eyes and rest. Oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended you. And I detest all my sins because of your just punishment. But most of all because they offend you, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. I firmly resolve with the help of your grace to sin no more and to avoid the near occasion of sin Amen. 
I know there are many versions of the act of contrition. That's the one I learned probably in the 70s when I was making my first Holy Communion. It doesn't matter what version you use. All that matters is that you seek repentance. You seek forgiveness. And we try with all our might to avoid sin. Gathered as a family, united in faith and baptism, let us with confidence bring our needs and prayers before our loving God and Father. For church leaders, may the Lord strengthen them in their work of safeguarding the faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for world leaders that they will be able to find peaceful solutions to the world's conflicts, especially in the Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation. May the Holy Spirit inspire our leaders to work for the good of the weak, the poor, the marginalized, the unborn, and the unwanted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who struggle with doubt. May the Lord sow a seed of faith in their lives and bring confidence and joy to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for our own faith community gathered here. May the Lord bring forth abundant fruit from our prayer and our service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, the lonely, the oppressed, the fearful, the anxious, may they know God's healing touch. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, May the Lord welcome them into his eternal peace in the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all your needs, all your attentions, that we bring to the Lord today in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray an act of spiritual peace. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us join up all of our prayers together. Let us lift them up to God our Father. Let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Gracious and loving God, we ask you to hear these petitions in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Go to him when you're weary, he will give you wings. You will one never tire, for your God will be your strength. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name. Sing the praise and the glory of God.